it's Begonia Day, and you might have a couple of your little sad babies around. So stay tuned for the following video, and I'll show you how I, from my found knowledge, learned how to take care of these during the their dormant season. Hello, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Blue Phoenix. My pronouns are they, them. I make fun planting videos from my found knowledge, and then also share with you a fun plant vlog on Wednesdays of what I do behind the scenes of my plant shop, Blue Rose Gardens, located in Fort Worth, Texas. If that's something that you like, I recommend subscribing, commenting down below, and always, if you can, liking my videos, helping me reach a, a larger audience. And I also enjoy engaging with you all down in the comments, so always feel free to leave a comment down below. Let's get down to today's video. In this week's video, I'm sharing with you all what to do when your begonia might look like this. A little sad begonia here. This is actually when your begonia is going dormant. So when your begonia is going dormant, it's going to fall all the way back to a rhizome. Uh, it's rhizomatous. Uh, so like cane begonias will take a little bit longer like this. This is a, this is a begonia griffin. You all might have seen this on my website and thank you all so much for purchasing from me for and um, so I'm, I hope these videos help you out with uh, caring for your begonias. With this one, this is my begonia taco night. This is the, my mother plant. Um, this plant has uh, fallen back, pretty much going dormant, but you know that it's a healthy begonia because um, the rhizome, the rhizome of the begonia is healthy and I'm going to show you what a healthy rhizome and also what a um, slightly unhealthy rhizome will look like and i did this so that way um, i can share this knowledge with you all and hoping it helps you out with begonias and secretly i'm gonna tell y'all i'm gonna turn everybody into begonia fan you all are just gonna love begonias and you can blame me for that <laughs> So in this one, I'm going to share with y'all, get a little closer. As you see here, it might look like it's a healthy begonia rhizome, and it pretty much is, um, but it's really not. Be and the reason why is because of the soil. So the thing with begonias, retain a lot of moisture in, in their soil. This one is a more like peat moss heavy type mixture of a, moist of a, of a soil mixture. So this moisture mixture has not helped the rhizome thrive. So when it's being watered, it's actually carrying off to the rhizome. And the, ry and the rhizome is uh, becoming a little bit less healthier than what it normally would look like. It's still a healthy uh, rhizome and can be saved. Um, but it's still not as healthy as this one. There's a difference between this one and the one I just showed y'all. As you see here, um, it shows more of a, um, like a fleshier green. And there's more like, uh, knuckles right here that are more visible with, um, even if it's like somewhat of a new growth, it's, and it's not growing really, it's still, it's still a very, really healthy rhizome. And then if you take a closer bitty 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 look right in here close to the stem of the begonia there is going to be another one that is protruding out from the soil so this is happening um, in order to form another plant so this is really like taking all of its energy into forming another plant over here this will produce more but this first needs to be uh, more visible and with more growth and and foliage as well so that way then it can carry on energy onto this rhizome and help it produce that's for an i what i've noticed from caring for begonias i've been caring for begonias for like two years now i want to say um and i really like and i really like really just went in heavy into knowing what begonias because I love begonias. I love their foliage. I love the way they they look. I love the the possibilities that you can have with them and creating another new begonia. So um, this is my begonia fedor propagation, and then this is 
the mother plants over here. I just I just love it, and so I just always keep it around. And then I I sometimes just do little giveaways with it, just like just little give little giveaways, just give them away to people. People really love them, and like this one right here, this is its new growth, like it like the other uh, begonia that I was showing y'all, and how it's protruding out, and how this one is going to be producing more growth. So what I'm going to be doing right here, um, and if you remember from my one of my older videos i did this with this begonia here this is a begonia maculata whitey eye um and what i was telling people is basically i'm restarting the plant and i'm cutting it all the way back in order to uh, produce more foliage more prominent growth and helping it actually uh, thrive more and from that on I'm just I'm just letting this one just chill until uh, I Until it's growing larger and then I'll take more propagations from it. I have made lots of propagations from it There's actually one the last one I sold. It's for a customer. I'm gonna show y'all how I'm gonna Propagate this one later on in the video so that way I can uh, make more for, for the following year this is also my begonia escargot. You might have seen me rescue this one in a plant rescue video um, from Lowe's. I do a lot of rescues from Lowe's and then I put them out for my potato plant, levo plant sometimes. Sometimes I do enjoy them a little bit and then I just put them out there. This one is basically doing the same thing also and it's just restarting itself around here. I find it a little bit nice that they go dormant so that way I don't have to really worry about them. So for lighting, what you're going to be needing to do is still keep it in a very like bright indirect light. Um, and you're not going to really see a lot of new growth right away, but um, it is growing. And so it does need a little bit of water. No fertilizer, just water um, during this time. And what I would do is just bottom water it and, if, and only water it until you really feel like it's on the lighter side. And you'll know, you'll know because of the difference in soil, the way it looks on top. And so you wanna just like check the soil, the top soil, see how it looks. And then you also wanna gauge it to see how heavy it is. And from there, you can then decide if how much water you're going to need to water it. And then also you'll see from, you'll like really like end up uh, engaging with it and develop and developing a, a relationship with how much water you need to do with that but as long as you just kind of like keep them slightly moist they'll end up growing back out um just leave a couple leaves there and then you'll see like in the rhizome there'll be like new growth which will be like that vibrant pink in there some of them will be a different color it just depends on the the the, the color of the 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 begonia itself but this one has like those nice little like pink points in there um, and that's the new growth I'm not gonna water this until it's really really dry and and then I'm gonna repot it um, like in a couple months maybe you want to repot it whenever uh, there's like really more prominent new growth on it and then that way you can um, it won't be like so in shock when you're repotting it so I wanted to share with you all how to water your begonia um, while it's in its dormant uh, status and it's uh, with a little heavier peat moss of a mixture as well. So what we're going to do is grab a nice size container, fill it up with some water in the bottom. This is called bottom watering. You want to, whenever you feel like you're learning how to water your plant, bottom water it. It's definitely the most and most safest way of knowing of how to like really like know, know how much water your plant needs. So plants absorb water uh, through the roots and then bring all that up and all that up into the plant itself um, and they and you really know um, how much it really needs because then you'll see um, all the water being absorbed and also uh, you'll feel how much how heavier it is.
So the heavier it is, the more water it's holding. You just want to start off with just a little bit. Um, I have this one where I measure my water and I have it at eight ounces. So I keep it at eight ounces and then I just let it get watered like that. And then as you will see from here, it's just being absorbed. Push it all the way down to make sure that all the water is being absorbed and getting uh, water to the plants. And that is propagations. You could just propagate them in so many ways um, that can benefit you. So I propagate them in water, soil, and in vermiculite. Um, this is my vermiculite propagation that I have for it. You see from there, I, I'm, doing, I'm doing a leaf propagation from it. Don't mind the other propagation, we're just focusing on the bigodia propagation. <laughs> But yeah, and it, it, it will just eventually grow. Um, it needs to, like to be in this like semi-moist vermiculite um, setup. And I had it closed until the begonias were just like uh, protruding a little too far out. And then I just left it in my grow tent open. And it's been growing well um, until I find a until um, I'm gonna. Later on this week, I'm making a video of a begonia, of a terrarium that, that I now have. So I'll be putting all these little begonia propagations in there. So you'll see all that um, in the following week. Just so many videos to put out. And then I did, this is my begonia taco night. So this is the one I, I, I did when I was seeing that it was like also uh, going dormant. I had a whole bunch of propagations. I traded most of them and then I sold like, I think like one or two of them. Comes from the leaf propagation. Can y'all see from in there like that? How it comes out, out from the inner part of it. So it'll just eventually come out from wherever you like make a little slit um, on the begonia. So it's, it's really fun and easy. And then even after that, you could just cut this part off and uh, this will just start reproducing on its own. You can even pr probably put this in some part of the soil and then I'll just make another part for the begonia. So it's just, it just keeps reproducing itself. And that's what I really like about the begonias. It just, they just don't stop, they just keep on going. Um, so that's soil, that was vermiculite, and now for water. As you see, I'm restarting this one. And what I'm trying to do is like get the new growth from the bottom. So we're going to cut it from a knuckle, or like underneath a knuckle. Let's see. Like that. And so what a knuckle is, is a node. I, this is a node. It has a little leaf, uh, a little leaf, well, form from it underneath it. And that's where uh, the new growth will come out from it. And then that will just be placed in some water. Well, I will recommend this to um, not keep on going and cutting. If there is no foliage on the stem or on, around the knuckle, it's not going to uh, be wise to do it. It's going to give you more of a risk of um, destroying the plant than actually saving it. So you just want to make sure that there is enough foliage on what you're propagating so if I were to propagate this stem where there's just foliage on it it might it might uh, produce new new growth from it but overall you have a higher chance of actually of not receiving any growth from it and it all just rotting away so instead If you cut this part off from it, um, it's a really nice, healthy um, part. So now I'm just like left with this. The begonia knows now to uh, transfer its energy onto this part of the stem and actually start producing new growth from where you see those like sheaths right here. Uh, underneath these little sheaths is where the is a node where the new growth will uh, emerge from it. And eventually, like this one, it'll just bush back out. Um, and what I'm going to do is not water it um, because it's pretty much already really like moist. So we're just going to leave it alone and it'll just produce more new growth from it. I have actually like two other 
soil propagation from it. I'll show you real quick. So as you see here, here's two more of the same species of begonia, begonia griffin, the one that we're just propagating right now. And um, when you're propagating these, and the best way to do it is actually by the, 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 the cane of it, but like this one right here, this foliage will eventually like die off. Um, so don't worry too much about the first few foliages, like the first leaves, they're eventually going to um, rot off. They just, they just naturally do that. Um, I haven't figured out why, but that's just what they do. This one did it, so I just cut it off. And then I placed it in, I placed it in, I placed it somewhere around here in one of my water vessels. Here it is. Okay, so I found it and it has like really tiny itty bitty little roots on it. Propagating cane begonias by leaf, leaf and stem, you're going to have to wait until they produce um, growth from the bottom of it. And what I mean is like, you're going to see like a little tiny bitty like begonias emerging from there and that's when you're you're going to be like more you'll understand it but you'll see it and then they'll once they look a little bit more like bigger from the bottom of the stem you can actually pot it up um because if you pot it up right away when they're like still forming they're not going to have a high a good chance of it actually like surviving so you just want to really wait it out until it actually um starts to give you nice good foliage from the, nice new growth from the bottom. You're also going to want to make sure that you make enough propagations um, for uh, your begonia because you're going to have failed propagations. Lots of I can't tell you how many I've lost but I've lost a lot and, and it's not it's not gonna be your fault it's just how it is sometimes they just they just die you know what I mean? Like they just. So you just want to make sure you have enough uh, good propagations and sturdy ones, and enough to like actually help you uh, produce a new plant. Uh, that way, you actually have a good chance of actually making a new plant for yourself. Plus, it also helps you um, rescue other plants ar around there. You get a nice, like, good relationship with begonias. Like they're. They might look a little hard at first and weird and ugh, their soil might be hard and this lighting and humidity and but if you just kind of group them together transpiration will happen which causes them to just naturally provide humidity for themselves. They are tropical plants so that's what all the plants will do. They exude moisture from their from from around them when they're grouped around other plants so that really just helps out plus I overall would just like look at all the resources uh, that there are available for you to feel comfortable to propagate or care for another plant you know I hope this vid video helped you all out um, I love begonias and I just love sharing my found knowledge with with you all and like I told you all early in the video you all will eventually be go become begonia fanatics just as much as I am. Um, they are great, fun plants. They're super easy to care for, and they're just so easy, so great to share amongst a lot of other people. It's really rewarding when you know yourself that you can care for something. They look a little like weird and hard to care for, but overall, it's super easy, and you just have to engage with it and learn what kind of relationship you have with your begonia as always everyone thank you so much for uh, helping my channels grow i really appreciate all the new members welcome new members thank you all so much for joining my discord group also um, the link is always down below there's more um, information on the qr code um, i'd love for you all to leave a review for my my plant shop we're always looking for feedback and um, ways to like make our our services and products improve for you all so thank you so much uh, there's lots of great deals on our newsletters and uh, email notifications so if you ever just want to like 
know what, what's going on, sign up for those email news email letters. That they send you something. There's always like great discounts for sending and plans and bundles and just all sorts of great things that we're offering. Till next time, everybody. Bye. Peace.